So now, Paul, I, there are an awful lot of our colleagues who love to measure HR diagrams. And in fact, for decades and, and still today, there's so much science that can be done because it's the subtle features in each HR diagram, right? Yeah, so let's imagine you've got some bunch of stars. Probably the first thing most astronomers do is measure an HR that, diagram. That's right. Of course, you can't measure it for one star. You need a, a cluster or a group or a galaxy or something. But you take a picture of it, you measure the brightness and the color of all the stars, and yeah. then you get a diagram like this. That's right, and there's a lot of them, and as you said, uh, very easy to do, and you can take different colors, and so you can really easily get a large sample for your diagram quickly. Yeah, now so far we've been explaining from first principles, what an HR diagram should look like. That's right. What astronomers are doing is, is the reverse. They don't, don't know what's happening in some cluster of stars, and they look at an HR diagram and have to sort of be like a detective. Exactly. You kind of look what's there and also what's not there to figuring out what's going on. OK, so uh, uh, you can be detective Sherlock. Brad. All right, detective, okay. detective Brad. Detective um, Brad. We've got some HR diagrams for you here, and we're going to ask you to solve the clues. I really hope I get this right. <laughs> So, I mean, I, this one's quite interesting because there's actually no other stuff, right? There's yeah. no turnoff, there's no horizontal branch. No white dwarfs down exactly. here. Exactly. So, you kind of just have essentially a group of stars that were pretty much formed all at the same time in the main sequence, right? There, there's yeah. no older stars here. So, you're just seeing the main sequence. You're seeing all of it all the way from very blue to very red. That's right. But none of, them have, none of them have evolved, none of them have changed. So what do you think is going on here? So this is essentially young stars. This is kind of looking at a star formation region, I would say, where lots of young stars have just been produced all at the same time. That's right. So what we've got is a whole bunch of massive stars and low mass stars, all of which are formed at the same time. And we've taken a picture of them just after they formed. If we wait even a million years, which an astronomer is, yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah. We would start to have seen at least those at big least the stars. really massive the O stars exactly. start racing off. And if you waited you know, 10 million years, some of the B stars would have gone as well. That's right. So we must have caught this just, just right after formed. birth. Yeah. Then it's probably, if you took a picture, there'd still be swirling clouds of gas all around. Probably one of those pretty pictures people like, in fact. That's right. OK, yep. So I'll give you full marks okay. for this one. This is a, a very uh, young population of yep. stars, only just born. How about something like this? All right, so we clearly have seen the turnoff, mm -hmm. and we have some white dwarfs. So we, we have old stars, but we also have stars that haven't turned off. But, as we were saying before, there's nothing here. So that means there's no young, big stars going on right now. So presumably, you have a group of stars that all formed at the exact same time, but it's a little bit older. Yeah, so if you hold, formed a whole bunch of stars all in one go and then just let them evolve for a while. That's right. The, the O and the B stars have now gone. gone. They've moved off up to here and then probably ended up as white dwarfs down there. But some of the... black the, holes or neutron stars. But or some of the smaller stars haven't still had yep. that chance to go yet. So to begin with, it probably looked like the one we were looking at last time. Yep. It went all the way up here and then the ones up the top moved off and then the ones further down moved off. And now we've got to the stage where they're turning off here. This is what we call the turn off. So it's a, and it's a very clear turn off. So, so it's kind of like the last one. We have a burst of stars all at the same time, but just longer now. Now we've caught yeah. it a few tens of millions of years. If we could after. look at the spectral type of these stars here and find out how old they are, like if the stars there were two billion years old, that's telling us probably the whole thing formed two billion years ago, and everything that's less has a lifespan of less than two billion years has so already changed. Has gone, and the stuff that's longer is still there. That's right. Okay. 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 Yeah. Pretty good. You're doing well here, Sherlock. All right. Okay. So let's try uh, this. Um, th this is, in fact, what you get in elliptical galaxies or globular clusters. They form all their stars in one go. That's right. And this is their actual like, I mean, the main sequence down here, then a well defined turn off, horizontal branch. Some, well, white dwarfs, if you could see them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how about this? So, all right. So we. We got a bit of both going on here. We still had some of these old white dwarfs. We still had the turnoff that we saw last time. But we still see stars up here. So this is telling us then that there's clearly old stars that have changed, but we still have these young O and B stars because there's no way to have these if they were produced at the same time two billion years that these have already turned off. So we've had now multiple bursts of star formation or something in this Something area? like that, yeah. So one possibility would just be that you had a a burst, say, a couple of billion years ago, and they evolved off. And then you had another burst of stars very recently, which yep. produced the O and B stars. Or it could be you're just continuously making more stars. So it's kind, of, it's kind of like the adding the first two together, right? Where you have a burst of young stars and a burst of slightly older stars. As you said, this is, this is kind of 
most galaxies, right? Most. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we see these O and B stars up here tells us there have been stars formed very, very recently. Very recently, that's right. But the fact that we're seeing the turnoff and all the giants and the white dwarfs tells us there were also stars formed a long time ago. So kind of just as before, if we look at some of these spectral types, we can figure out where some of these were formed, and then also when the last burst of star formation is based on how young we can find. That's right. And in fact, this is what you get if you look at the stars near our own sun. That's because we're in a spiral galaxy which has ongoing right. star formation. And so we see the main sequence and we see the turn off. So these are the older stars that have right. moved off. But we also see a continuation of the main sequence up here, which are the younger stars that were formed recently. So you have a mix of old and young stars. And it's this characteristic Y kind of shape right here. I mean, think of it a bit like uh, watching a crowd having a picnic at a park with a range of ages, mm -hmm. as opposed to looking at near grade six in primary school where everyone's the same age. That's right. Okay, so um, doing very well here. Good. Um, how about this one? Well, isn't this quite the train wreck? Um, okay, so again, let's look at what's not here. We don't have any of these O and B stars, yep. which means we're not having any recent star formation, but... We have two distinct turnoffs here, yep, right? right? So we're not, it's not like before where they all turned off here. So that means we've had then two bursts of star formation, but older, one more recent and one much long ago. Yep, that's right. So what would happen here is maybe there was a, a galaxy or something that formed a bunch of stars quite a long time ago. Yep. And then all the O and B and A and G stars probably went away, just leaving the tail up here. And then maybe some more gas was compressed and another bunch of stars formed when they are a bit younger. And they, they lost the O and B stars, but not the A and the, F stars. Yeah. So you're getting the old ones turning off up here and the younger bursts turning up here. There's a gap in the middle, which means it wasn't just continuing star formation. It was there like was two bursts. Distinct, yeah. Because otherwise, if it was continuing, you would get a whole, you kind of get this area filled out. Yeah. Now, it tends, that, it tends to be that uh, you get... By the time they're up here at the uh, red giant, they're all in the same place in the yep. diagram, no matter how old they are. But so it's kind of the position of the turnoff. That so really, you if you can find these stars at the turnoff, get a date of them, that can really tell you when that star formation, or essentially, or when those population was born. Okay, so well done, Brad. We hope that's shown you how you can interpret the mystery of HR diagrams.